time before many can remember. I already know I'm gonna hate this movie. A warlord named Piccolo came from beyond the stars. There's not a f***ing warlord named Piccolo who would decide to keep that name. The evil pair brought the human race to the brink of annihilation. Evil brings human race to the brink of annihilation, cliche. A group of brave warriors created the Mafuba. A powerful enchantment that imprisoned Piccolo deep within the earth. Why couldn't they create a powerful enchantment that would have killed this asshole? Why can't things kill things in these movies? Also, let's not only imprison him, but put him deep in the earth. Say hello to Parallax and the black goo from Thor the Dark World, asshole. With his master captured, Ozaru disappeared. Even though Piccolo's henchman is supposedly badass in his own right, he decided to just vanish instead of finishing off a weakened human race. Something tells me this will be the opposite of evolution. Like, we might not be able to stand completely upright after this movie. The first rule is, there are no rules. F*** you. CGI sweat is CGI. Also, slow motion sweat montage. I'm not saying I don't appreciate a good swat the fly into your grandfather's mouth scene occasionally, but I don't feel like this movie has earned my trust enough to get away with one so early. Apparently the first rule is that there are no rules about looking totally stupid either. Random ass watermelons are nearby so that falling into them is funny. You rely too heavily on your external senses. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them, am I right? True power comes from inside. Your key! Well, he is the key maker, so I guess Goku is learning from the right person. This area got landscaped during the Goku grandfather fight because now there's a shrub and greenery that was not there before. Seven Dragon Balls will grant the holder one perfect. Wish. If I had the seven Dragon Balls, I would wish that movies never again mention artifacts that are spread around the world and only work when they're collected. Goku parks his bike in a huge car space, which means Goku is a dick to his high school, and we all know where this is going. <laughs> also, the popular kids straight up try to murder Goku. Did you just fart, man? Because I could have swore I just heard something. No, the screenwriter just wrote something. Make me pay Giko. Giko. Fuller gives Goku a free shot to the left side of his face, which would be great for a right-handed punch, but Goku clenches his left fist for some reason. I'm gonna be late for class. Hot Babes currently banging Fuller show up just in time to humiliate Goku even further. Hot Babe, who's going out with the school asshole, actually really likes the protagonist cliche. I guess this is an invisible ship and no one who watches the skies for a living ever notices it. Also, what happened to the powerful spell that sent Piccolo deep into the earth? Did construction workers accidentally dig him up trying to build a McDonald's? Just because the wood creaks, this chick gets suspicious about people under the floor. Holy shit, it's Sinestro! Also, is there a reason why he needed to show up at this very moment, other than the dramatic reveal? Also, they dragged poor James Marsters into this, didn't they? Goku's fantasy involves strawberries, but not nudity. Nobody fantasizes in a classroom and gets away with it. What might our ancestors say about the upcoming solar eclipse? Who gives a shit what they might say? No wonder American kids don't learn anything in school. My grandfather would say, beware of the Nimix. Oh, so that's why the teacher asked such a stupid question. So we could get some exposition on some bullshit. They're an alien race that nearly destroyed Earth over 2,000 years ago. Surely it's more than that, right? I know we're in a fictional universe, but wouldn't there be evidence of this event if it only happened 2,000 years ago? Though Goku couldn't use his key when his grandfather asked, the power of boners is stronger. Use your key. The girl he's interested in just happens to know everything about this key bullshit. Goku takes the Dragon Ball to Chi-Chi's party for no reason other than the plot. Goku! Jeez, Goku didn't even tell his grandfather he was going to the hot chick's party? Seems like an unreasonable dick move considering he's so important to him. All the popular assholes from school decided to party outside the entrance to the mansion so that this fight could happen. Pouring water on the ground is awfully intimidating. It'll be a massacre. I know these guys aren't smart, but I thought everyone knew that a massacre involves killing lots of people. So even if you destroy Goku into millions of pieces, it's still not a massacre. Ah! This move might have been impressive if the bully didn't scream trying to punch him. Slow-mo overkill. Ah! Ah! Oh! After all those kids got knocked out trying to murder Goku, the party continued and the unconscious kids in need of medical attention were left lying in the driveway. You're different. I like different. That's why I dated the school's most popular asshole. And 18. That's perfect timing, because she's 26. Why did you bring ninja stars to fight the old man but a sci-fi gun to shoot the lady in the Japanese village? It's not here. If he knows the Dragon Ball isn't here just by feeling it, then why did they even bother going to the house? It's to kill the grandfather and make Goku feel bad for being a dick, isn't it? Also, father figure dies after the child was a dick to him cliche. Shit, he could've just done this in the first place. Why does he need any henchmen? Also, with this kind of power, who needs Dragon Balls? Something's wrong. The moon and the Dragon Ball know when Goku's grandfather is about to die for some reason. Didn't Piccolo just crush this house? Why isn't the whole house just a bundle of sticks and debris right now? I mean, come on. Piccolo has just about the same detection power as Sauron at this point. And did Piccolo not know about Gohan's grandson? He could have just waited here until he came back and he could have taken the Dragon Ball. Seven Dragon Balls must be found for all men's fate. We later find out this is a nursery rhyme. 
why a story like this was passed down as a nursery rhyme and not something important is total bullshit. This quest could have started a long time ago and there would have been no issue. Palzu United. Where is it? I know it's here. Motherfucking pronoun game. Also, they dragged poor Emmy Rossum into this, didn't they? Are you Piccolo? Did you not listen to your grandfather? He definitely referred to Piccolo as a he just before he died. Mai knew this job would require a jetpack at some point. Luckily for her, this highly secure vault has a skylight nearby. I followed the signal here and that's when I ran into you. There are seven Dragon Balls. How do you only get one signal? How'd you know I had the Dragon Ball? A little machine I invented. Oh good, because when Goku's grandfather said he was gonna have to find all these things, I thought he was gonna have to go on an adventure or something. Thank God that's not the case. Also, since she didn't know there was more than one Dragon Ball when she came here, did she invent this machine to track the one Dragon Ball in her father's vault just in case it got stolen? And if so, why didn't the machine tell her of the other Dragon Balls sooner? And she definitely didn't build this thing overnight either. I'm gonna make them an unlimited source of energy. Then I'll turn into Dr. Octopus and Spider-Man will have to stop me. This is less believable than the invisible car James Bond drove in that Die Another Day bullshit. He's here. How do you know? The real question is, how does Bulma know that Goku is referring to his dead grandfather? Dragon Ball Detector is just now detecting the presence of another Dragon Ball. Is this the same house Mal hit her totem in in Inception? Yeah, because that huge golden ball crashing down on the table wasn't noisy at all. Just because it's in muted slow motion doesn't mean it didn't make noise. They dragged poor Chaoyan Fat into this, didn't they? Also, they were just looking for Roshi, and here's Roshi! I thought it might take an adventure of some sort to find him. I sure am glad that's not true. Shadow Crane Strike. I recognize that anywhere. Wait, is a Shadow Crane Strike such an exclusive move that it absolutely has to be the work of Gohan? I trained him. Huh? Gohan is way older than Roshi, unless Roshi's supposed to be one of these Wolverine types who never ages. I am Buten Roshi! Seriously, guys, this is like watching Robert De Niro in Rocky and Bullwinkle. I just can't believe what I'm seeing here. And compel Shenlong to appear. Believe me, I tried forever to unlock Shenlong in Street Fighter 2, and that did not go well. If the prophecy is true. Fuck, can't we just have a sci-fi fantasy martial arts picture without a fucking prophecy for once? Seriously, who creates these prophecies anyway? An entire body of water disappears and no one sees it or reports it. Much easier to find without the water. This asshole can detect a stray Dragon Ball under the water, but still didn't know where the hell Goku's Dragon Ball was earlier. Shadow Crane Strike is the most basic of all the air bending techniques. But I could still tell you were using Gohan's particular Shadow Crane Strike for some reason, even though it is very common. Also, did we have to bring air bending into this? Isn't that a completely different anime? I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure that airbending is something else. Also, movie forces me to remember the last airbender. I know Roshi said he needed to become stronger, but this is an unnecessary dick move. And geez, it looks like he's physically fit enough to run this far with hundreds of pounds on his back without even breaking a sweat. I doubt he really needed to get stronger if that's the case. I thought you said this place is secret. And, well, it still should be. Even if you blabbed about this place, how many people would actually want to make the trek to train here? Goku's would-be girlfriend just happens to be wailing on some dude at a remote martial arts training park when Goku walks up. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Another Wilhelm bites the dust. Also, this guy is practicing his moves on top of the rock in this shot, but in the next, he practiced something disappearing because that asshole is gone. The house collapsed? Uh, yeah, something like that. Hey, what was it that you wanted to tell me? He was an old man and his death barely affected me at all. Girls are pretty. Where did this asshole get a coke? My key is shriveling up. Oh, maybe key really does have something to do with penis. At least this won't be a total waste. I got a signal from a Dragon Ball. Man, Dragon Balls are just everywhere they go, aren't they? Also, this device only detects them when they need to get the hell out of a scene. That's pretty convenient. I'm getting a strong signal from a Dragon Ball only three miles ahead. I mean, for the update, we heard that 40 seconds ago. Interesting racket. How many people drive down this country road and fall into this trap? This is a bad way to make money. I have no marshmallows, but I do have a story. Ironic that a character in this movie has a story, but the movie so far doesn't. 2,000 years ago. Damn it, he's rehashing the movie's opening narration. In two days, the blood moon will eclipse the sun. They've wasted a lot of time. Back when they were at Roshi's, he said they had seven days. In seven days, the sun will be eclipsed by the blood moon. Then they decided to go way out to this martial arts nature place, which must have taken five days because Bulma discovered a signal and they fell into the hole shortly after. Gathering Dragon Balls was the priority, but they wasted a whole week trying to give Goku some training he didn't really need. Also, if it took him five days to get to one place, that means Chi-Chi and Goku are in some serious trouble at school. That, or they're on spring break or some shit. Unless we find the Dragon Balls, and use our wish to banish Piccolo- Holy f***ing shit! The goal is to banish Piccolo from the Earth? How did that work last time again? Oh yeah, it didn't. Dragon Ball's close. I think it's buried underground. Because that's something your little device can tell you. He couldn't have done this earlier. It wasted even more time because this asshole wanted to tell the story we already heard at the beginning. We're gonna need some tools to excavate! Luckily, they were captured by a friendly bandit with those very tools. I guess Yen robbed us. 
We wouldn't be able to get this Dragon Ball. Movie states explicitly how stupid that is. I followed Mutin Roshi as directed. He's training the boy. Well, if you call running around with something heavy on your back training... Your blood will give it life. Give what life? What primordial jelly is just lying around waiting for Piccolo's blood to infuse life into it? This volcanic wasteland is apparently... Oh, only three miles ahead! ...from where they were riding the motorcycle earlier. <laughs> He's and right! I just ride my man! How does a Dragon Ball end up here, perfectly sitting on this volcano crag? Wait, there's an army of these things? Mia said his blood would give it life, sounding like one singular being, but there's a whole army? Here's the underworld school of movie fighting on full display. All we know is that asses are kicked. Into the lava! That's the only way to stop them! Well, it's a good thing you have a ton of lava around then. Making a bridge! Even better! Their dead bodies form a perfect bridge you need to cross the lava! Goku punches Mai, and she falls into the pit of characters the protagonist forgets about for no reason. He will destroy everything. The future's always changing. This is a Fox movie, and I think some of the pages of the Star Wars trilogy got mixed up with this one on the way to the copier. What's a harmless ball touching between bros? The eclipse is in two days. We'll never find the other Dragon Balls in time. You're just now figuring this out? There is an other way to stop Piccolo. Why bother wasting 45 minutes of time telling us these Dragon Balls are the only most important thing and then say, no, there's another way. F*** it. The only chance the world has now is in Toy Side. Hey, that's exactly where Chi-Chi said that fighting tournament's gonna be. They dragged poor Ernie Hudson into this, didn't they? Evil henchman has time to enter a fighting tournament just so she can steal Chi-Chi's blood. Also, it's pretty amazing they were conveniently paired together in order for this to happen. Goku somehow shows up right after Mai leaves the arena. Never thought I could enjoy talking to a thief. Sure, random guy enters the picture, he gets to nail Emmy Rossum. You can't have a business-minded hot girl who doesn't want to date, that's nonsense. Of all the things that have ever stopped people from kissing in movies, this is perhaps the dumbest and most welcome. You know, my grandpa always said, in order to master my key, I have to be at one with myself and with my enemy. I still don't know what that means. I'm pretty sure your grandpa didn't know what that meant either. Every time you light a torch, you get to take one step closer to me. I'm so certain you want to bone me, you'll be shooting key like it's a tantric money shot you've been holding in for weeks. Once again, even though Goku's mind could not figure out the key, the power of boners is stronger. Also, is this being at one with yourself and... Take one step back. Three more. Also, Maya's got to be the clumsiest ninja I've ever heard. Because those who can light three lanterns in one move should get laid no matter what. There are a bunch of people sleeping in this temple, but wait a minute, that noise is totally suspicious. Also, Maya's got to be the clumsiest ninja I've ever heard. How did Maya know to transform into Chi-Chi? All she knew from the volcano scene was that Goku and crew were going to toy -san because she was listening from that thing. Even if she somehow saw Goku and Chi-Chi in the secret martial arts place, it takes a huge leap to say, I remember that girl Chi-Chi, and she's going to be in that fighting tournament. I better hightail it down there and enter, because then I can steal her blood, transform into her, and no one will ask questions when I go into the temple. Also, how is she wearing the exact same outfit that the real Chi-Chi is? I mean, I can accept the blood transforming thing, but where does she get this exact outfit in a pinch when there isn't a gap anywhere in sight? We'll find another way. Or Goku could use the fire extinguishing thing we just saw him use about two minutes ago. Help me, Goku. He falls for this stupid shit, and the real Chi-Chi says nothing in protest. This cut is way, way bigger than the one she actually got at the tournament. Wrong one. The villain weapon that we just saw create a huge fire a minute ago changes to let's keep the hero alive mode. There's no real rush to change back into yourself, really, but there's definitely no real reason to change back just outside the room where there are people waiting to kill you. It's not your time, Goku. It's not your time, cliche. Grandpa, how? How do I defeat Ozaru? Always have faith in who you are. Thanks, Grandpa. I'll be sure to faith that monster to death. Also, why are you so concerned about Ozaru? Isn't Piccolo the main badass in this movie? That was my hell for 2,000 years. Luckily, powerful spells that send you deep into the earth let you free without explanation. I hope you're not trying to impress me. I wouldn't mind, but I'll settle for scared the crap out of you. How can this gas pedal go any farther when he had this thing going past 180 miles an hour? Why didn't you just do this in the first place? Crash landing through a giant rock in a flying Humvee brings no harm to our heroes whatsoever. I've just been in a horrible accident. Better get into my yellow outfit. And shit, Roshi fell out of the Humvee, landed on hard rocks, and then slammed by falling rocks. This adventure presents no real danger to anyone except those who watch it. You will bear witness to my glory when I compel Shen Long to grant me the power to rule this diseased rock. I pretty much already have that power now, but I decided I needed to get a magic genie dragon to really make it work. When the blood moon eclipses the sun, you will become Uzaru. Here's another whammy surprise that doesn't make one bit of sense. I don't know anything about Dragon Ball, and I'm pretty sure this shit's all over the Dragon Ball universe. Also, this is a ridiculously convoluted plan. 
I feel like Uzaru could have lived in the Pacific Northwest as Bigfoot, and that would have made more sense than transforming into a baby who only reverts to his true form 18 years later. But only if there's a solar eclipse. Also, why did Piccolo and his henchmen try to kill Goku so many times in this movie if he was that important? And why do people who make prophecies not see something like this? You travel by meteor to hide amongst the vermin. Who exactly set the meteor into motion, making sure it landed in the right spot, especially when Piccolo was in prison deep beneath the earth? Whoever did this had to make sure it landed precisely 18 years before Piccolo would be set free, something that was impossible to predict and still hasn't been explained. At some point, this movie just needs to give me a f***ing break. Powerful Mafu Ba Tornado still allows its captor to conjure magic while ensnared in it. Roshi, let me help you! Saying things! The awful bad guy who once was good can be reasoned with and turned back into a good person cliche. Oh, sir, can be beaten with fists, only with faith. How about a nuclear bomb? Could anything defeat him before he had this stupid idea to turn into a meteor baby? Because I'm still scratching my head about the meteor baby. Impossible. Agreed. First rule is... There are no rules. This movie just ran with that shit, didn't it? Wait! Mmm, okay. I can't quite figure out what's wrong with this scene, but maybe it's because it looks fake as shit. The Dragon Ball is mine. <laughs> Your mistake was talking. Also, this guy survived through sheer movie editing. When we last saw him, he was getting pummeled by Uzaru, but we didn't see the whole fight. So he survived because fuck you. That's why. To be a one with myself, I must be two. Yeah, but that was about mastering your key and shit. Didn't have anything to do with this other nonsense. I wish it didn't have to end this way. When someone says something about this movie not ending, I get nervous. Dragon! A wish requires a ceremony? Also, why did Piccolo have to wait until the solar eclipse to make his wish, but Goku can make a wish any damn time he pleases? The Dragon Balls are gone. We have to find them again. What kind of bullshit is that? Also, this movie thought it was gonna get a sequel. I just have to do one thing. Goku refers to Chi-Chi as a thing. If our relationship is gonna go anywhere... You basically just met. How is this a relationship right now? Discount Rocky 3. Showing the main title again reeks of desperation and refunds. Movie we long ago walked out on has a bonus scene during the credits. F*** you, movie. Normally, we never do this. We never refer to the original material when we come up with sins for a movie. And for the main sins video, we kept to that philosophy. However, considering that Dragon Ball Evolution is one of the most requested sin videos we've ever had, we decided to do some research. Just this once. Don't ever get used to it. We take you to... The things that pissed off the fans of Dragon Ball bonus round. <coughs> Goku's hair. What happened to Goku's power pull? Couldn't this story have used some serious power pulling action? I know Chi-Chi does. Isn't Gohan a famous martial artist? In this, he's just an old dude who knows some moves. Things have gotten better at Gohan's residence as their small hut has turned into a large house on some large plantation of some sort. Collect friends. Where's Goku's best friend, Krillin? I guess you can't be a lonely teenager if you have even one friend. In the movie, Goku only cares about fitting in at school and not becoming a crazy fighting badass. They've turned Mai into a humorless killer. I thought Mai worked for Emperor Pilaf. Oh well, not enough room for two big villains in this movie. Seriously? No antenna? What's up with school anyway? Isn't one of the big things about Goku is that he doesn't have much of an education? The only time this asshole ever wants to hone his key is when Chi-Chi's around. And this guy didn't really even like Chi-Chi in the manga. Although if she looked like Jamie Chung, that would have turned things around. This movie didn't have the balls to have Goku as the great ape step on and kill his own grandfather. Bulma has blue and purple hair, right? Not just one silly streak of blue hair. Also, she knows way more about the Dragon Balls than she does in the movie. What the f*** is up with that? Bulma is definitely no fighter but the movie would have you believe that she is. Her wish was to have a boyfriend, not money and fame. We actually would have given credit to the movie for that change, but then she falls in love with Mancha for no reason. In the movie, Roshi is not bald and looks way younger than Gohan, his supposed student. In the effort to keep a PG movie, Roshi's perversions are kept in check. Yamcha also wants to make money with these Dragon Balls, not cure his shyness. Of course, this asshole is in no way shy in the movie. Look at what this motherfucker is wearing! In the movie, Piccolo creates minions using blood, not eggs. Also, where are his kids? Tambourine, cymbal, and drum. Yamcha is a major fighter character turned into comic relief in this movie. Also, where's his sword? In the movie, Roshi's master is Sifu Norris, when it's really Master Mutaitu. Also, Roshi never doubted Piccolo's existence, calling the Kamehameha airbending. Goku was such a badass in the original material, he didn't need boners to pull off the Kamehameha. He just did it, because that's what Goku does. Bulma is quick to pull that gun out, isn't she? She should be way more hesitant. Mai can shapeshift? The Kamehameha brings Goku back to life, even though it has no healing properties whatsoever. In the movie, Piccolo wants to rule the world, or something, but not become young again. Now we know why this is really stupid. Goku came to Earth in a spacecraft in the manga, and in this, he comes via meteor, which of course is dumb as hell. Remember when I said this scene probably all over the Dragon Ball series? Here are the reasons it's wrong. 
Transformation in the movie requires no tail. Uzaru is way smaller than the great ape that Goku can turn into. The great ape is turned into a character named Uzaru and works for Piccolo, who has no affiliation with great apes. A solar eclipse makes the transformation possible rather than the moon. The Mafuba is a total pussy in this movie. Mai never dies in the series, but evil always has to be punished in the movie. Goku easily defeats a normally extremely tough Piccolo in this movie. Yep, I thought this was stupid. He can only be summoned by this dumb incantation by Goku, whereas usually just yelling out his name would do the trick. Shenron is a big character and he gets no speaking lines, just grants a wish and then disappears. And finally, the Dragon Balls don't turn to stone in this movie. Also, they just get lost rather than being unable to be used for a year, which makes way more sense than this bullshit. It's over 9,000! He said right! I just ride my neck! So listen, why don't you turn around, walk away, no one will even know you were here. Are you deaf, McFly? Beat it. No, Biff. You leave her alone. All right, McFly. You're asking for it. And now you're going to get it. There is another Stop. sure found a way to make the time pass up there. Shoot us! Shoot us! Kitty bang bang, kitty kitty bang bang, kitty bang bang, kitty kitty bang bang, kitty bang bang, kitty kitty bang bang. Oh yeah! Here comes Kool-Aid, here comes Kool-Aid. Something my grandfather taught me. First rule is... You do not talk about Fight Club. I like children. For breakfast? <laughs> Never. I'm a luck dragon. My name is Falcor. <laughs>